What is happening, everybody? Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to discuss the six freedoms of martial arts. There's some controversy in here, but I don't care. We're going to do it anyway. <laughs> if you're new to the show, if you're new to Whistlekick, please start at whistlekick.com. Find out all the things that we do. I started this company well over a decade ago because... Well, I wanted better sparring gear, and we made better sparring gear, but now we make so many other things, and that's why you should check out whistlekick.com, because you can get better sparring gear 15% off with the code PODCAST15, but you could also read up and get links to Marshall Journal and Free Training Day and All In Weekend and our blog and our training programs, and the biggest thing that I think we are known for is the show, Martial Arts Radio, and I'm joined today by my often co-host, producer extraordinaire, Andrew Adams. Andrew, thank you for being here. That is you. I appreciate you being here. Andrew and I have a good time talking on our Thursday episodes about something. And today we're talking about the six freedom of martial arts. Now, if what we do here at Whistlekick really clicks for you, then please, I would encourage you to consider supporting us. What, what, What do we do? Well, we do a lot of things, but why do we do it? We do it because we're trying to connect, educate, and entertain all of you. And the end goal is to get everyone in the world to train for six months because we believe martial arts brings out the best in us. And if that means something to you, please support us. Uh, Share episodes, buy stuff, tell people, subscribe, leave reviews, or consider supporting our Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. If you're a martial arts school owner, you could join the Patreon at the $50 or $100 tiers and get access to the School Owner's Mastermind. You will not find a better value for motivation and accountability and creative ideas to help your school than exists in that group. So consider joining. But what if you're not a school owner or what if you want to spend less? Well, you can go to the other end of the spectrum, $2 a month, and you get a whole bunch of stuff like who's coming up on the show. $5, $5, you start getting bonus content, bonus episodes that you're not going to get anywhere else. And we know that we're crushing it with the Patreon because people very rarely unsubscribe. In fact, what happens much more often is that people up their pledges. So, yay, go us. And at $5 a month, you get free merch. Oh, yeah. Look at all my stickers. All, this, is, this is my whistle printer. It's it works all, better because of those stickers. It does work better, yep. It kicks out pages much quicker. <laughs> and if you are a big fan, if you love what we do, please consider checking out the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. We don't link it. You got to type it in, but it's worth it. You'll find stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. Now, back in January, we hosted an online live stream called mm-hmm. The State of the Martial Arts. And a big component of that was me codifying some things that I had felt frustrated about in the martial arts world over many years that ultimately became six freedoms of martial arts. Yeah. We have posted clips of some of this content in various places. Uh, There's a page that will eventually go up at whistlekick.com because this is such a strong line in the sand that we feel needs to be drawn. But Andrew and I were talking and he said, you know, it's worth unpacking this again in a different way for a different audience and with some discussion because last time it was me going, not having a conversation. And and I agree. And so that's what we're going to do today. We have six freedoms here and I'm going to read them all up front and then we'll go back through and we'll unpack them. You know, I don't know how much time we're going to spend on each one. We'll talk until it makes sense to not talk about it anymore and move on to the next one. So number one, the freedom every martial artist has. Number one, the freedom to train what they want, how they want, when they want, where they want, with and from whom they want, and why they want. Number two, the freedom to remain private about who, what, where, when, why, and how they train, as well as their rank, instructor, lineage, and training history. Number three, the freedom to determine what martial arts is to them and to embody that for themselves. Number four, the freedom to become better as martial artists and as people. Number five, the freedom to take your martial arts training back into your life in the way that you feel is best, including self-defense and protection of others. And number six, the freedom to compete in a mutually agreed upon fashion. 
Now yeah. on the surface, those all sound great. And you might wonder how could anybody have a problem with any of them, except that in every single case, I wrote those out because there were people who want to take those freedoms away from people. Whether they mean to or not. So let's start with the first one, the freedom to train what they want, how they want, when they want, where they want, with and from whom they want, and why they want. This is probably my favorite one. Of, of and it's, and I, I, it's the first one for a reason, right? We did an episode, and I don't remember what we ended up calling it, but in my brain, it's still, we kicked around a, a title of the First Amendment of Martial Arts. Mm -hmm. And it was that episode and that thinking that ultimately led to these freedoms. Because this is something that I think about a lot. Now, if we unpack this, what, how, when, where, with and from whom, and why, some of those are much more uh, hot buttons for people than others. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody really cares where you train. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to train in a... a a well, big school or a small school or a basement or outside. I don't hear people arguing about that very often. No, no. I mean, the only thing, the only one that I could conceivably see is, uh, and I'm, I'm always going to put myself in the bad position. Sure. So someone comes to me and says, oh, I train at this school across town. I could be like, oh, you shouldn't train there. You should come train with me. Like where you train comes into play there. But I don't but, see people arguing about it online. Yep. Yep. And that I would say that that's less about the where, the physical space, and more about the, the next clause, with and from whom. That, okay, that's fair. Yep. Right. Who your instructors are and who your, who your fellow students are. Right. right. People get wrapped, bent out of shape about that. But others that are less important. Um, when? There are people who will say, well, if you're not training this many hours per week. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's kind of rare. You know, if you want to train Mondays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays or six days a week, nobody really seems to mind that much. Yeah. It's the what they want, the how they want, mm -hmm. and the why they want that people yes. really get upset. Yeah. And that comes down to, I think, a very simple thing, and it ends up being discrepancies in the why. Why you train will inform what you train, how you train, when you train, etc. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 I would agree. The biggest, one of the biggest that I see often, um, this is by no means the biggest, but it's one that I happen to notice a lot is a lot of people will say, Oh, this style is so quote dumb, or why would anyone ever want to train in this particular style? And, uh, who cares? That's, that's what it comes down to, to me. Like if person A is training their style and I'm purposely not saying the style that, that comes up for me all the time, but if person A is happy doing that, good for them. Yep. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect them. I don't train in that style. That's fine. I don't want to, but if we did a, I did, who cares? We did a whole episode on this because the... Uh, the, the common response, the common defense of taking this position is, well, it gives black belts a bad name and all this other stuff. And, and um, do you remember the episode title that we did for that? I don't. It was the the myth, the myth of something. I don't. Okay. It's we did a whole episode. Over 800 episodes. Yeah, no kidding. We did a whole episode where we just destroyed that argument. It, it doesn't exist. Okay. If somebody wants to go train in something that you disagree with, let them go. Let them do their thing. Don't be so arrogant as to dictate, to, to think that you have a position in dictating how all these things go. Because remember, nobody ordained you as the keeper of what somebody else's reasons and methods for training are. And you are welcome to your definition of martial arts. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But it's not right. I have mine. Andrew has his. They're slightly yeah. different. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be because often it comes across the people that are saying these things. Oh, that's such a dumb martial art that would never work on the street. Okay, well, maybe, maybe that person has no intention of 
having to defend themselves on the street. Maybe they're taking it because it it feels good and they enjoy it. And for them, it's centering and, and it's giving them peace in their life because they have a job that is very stressful. And for them. So why does it have to be effective on the street? What if they're, let's say, self-defense lacking martial arts training is the only thing keeping them from relapsing into heavy use of drugs or alcohol. Sure. Yep. Um, the likelihood that you're going to need to defend yourself and avoid harm in a street confrontation is a far lower statistic than the harm that one would do by drinking heavily or, or doing drugs, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that to me, that's self-defense. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to number two. Okay. Every martial artist has the freedom to remain private about who, what, where, when, why, and how they train, as well as their rank, school, instructor, lineage, and training history. What I tend to see, and I don't see this as often as I used to, but what I used to see was if someone would make an argument against something in the first freedom, you know, well, that, that's stupid. That's not how that's done. You're wrong, etc. If that, if the person that was being attacked was able to defend that attack well, and, and we're talking usually verbal attacks, well, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it was, I really don't care what you think, or this is how my instructor showed me, or I like it this way. It might have been met with, well, who is your instructor? Who did your instructor learn from? Where, show me your rank certificates. Yeah. Yep. As if that really matters. Yeah. And as if anybody is entitled to demand them. Who made you the martial arts police? Nobody. The answer is nobody. So yep. you're demanding to see someone else's Credential. certificates, yeah. credentials. Um, let's face it, it doesn't matter what credentials they show you, you're still not going to agree with them. So why bother asking? You're yeah. fishing for a reason to justify you feeling superior. And you don't, you, you know, on some level, you don't have a right to feel superior. So you're trying to back it up with, with these other things. Yeah. I also think at times political stuff comes into play there mm -hmm. because they want, they, who, who, who did, who's your instructor? Person A. Oh, well, I don't like person A because of X, Y, Z. And so your rank means nothing to me, whatever. Great. Okay. Now, well, does that mean you'll leave me alone? <laughs> you know, for a lot of people, martial arts training is very private. You know, there are a lot of people who get into training for deeply personal reasons. And we've heard a lot of those stories on martial arts radio. The idea that someone would have to justify or rather, ex you know, disclose where they're training and why they're training and all these other things is incredibly insensitive. You know, um, we, we did an episode on the movie Red Belt mm -hmm. and I keep coming back to the example you know, a scene in that film where the instructor instantly put a new student in a very um, emotionally Potential. stressful Perfect. situation um, that just really showcased a lack of understanding. Now it's a movie, but if you've been training for more than a little while, and you have some awareness of the people around you and you train with more than like two people, you've probably trained with someone who's been the victim of some manner of physical violence. And there are people who don't want to say that that's why they're training. Mm -hmm. They have no, you have no right to demand that they tell you that that's why they're training. Yep, exactly. They have the right to train. If we go back to the first freedom, which is the most important one, the freedom to train what, how, when, et cetera, they want. 
because they have that freedom, they also have the freedom to not have to tell you Correct. their why. And this really is an expansion of the why. Yep, exactly. Yep. And, and again, you mentioned earlier, someone training because they don't want to relapse into drugs or alcohol. That could be their reason. So for me to say to them, you have to tell me why you want to train. Or why they, do you train that way? Or yep. why do you train with that person? They may not want to disclose that information to you. And they have the right to not have to tell you. Yep. Let's go to number three. Every okay. martial artist has the freedom to determine what martial arts is to them and to embody that for themselves. I get a lot of people arguing with me on this. This is probably the one I get the most flack for because my definition of martial arts, mine is personal growth through the practice of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mm -hmm. It's evolved a little bit from the very early years, but it's the, the spirit's been the same. I don't expect that to be anybody else's definition. Now, why is it so important that I have the right to determine what martial arts is to me, just as you do to you and just as the audience does for them? Because why is one definition superior? Correct. Now, this is where people will get ridiculous. Well, what if I say martial arts is driving a car? Uh, I refer you back to Freedom One, the freedom to train, what, how. If you think that you are practicing martial arts, driving a car, I don't care. It has no bearing on me. If you think that martial training martial arts is playing basketball, I don't care. Now, yep. by the way, I could make a case that there are martial elements to both of those activities. Oh, absolutely. And we have an episode upcoming where we're going to chat a little bit about making martial arts or bringing martial arts into everyday activities. But if, if you get to say that your definition is more correct than mine, where does that authority come from? Yeah, exactly. And let's, let's, put, uh, let's put labels on it that people will pro probably likely be able to understand better. Sure. Again, I'm going to make myself, I'll be the bad guy. Jeremy, do you feel that boxing is a martial art? Yes. Okay. I'm going to play devil's advocate. I also agree. I think boxing is martial art. But we're going to say, I feel boxing is not a martial art for whatever reason that is. And there are plenty of people who don't. Yep. And you know what? That's okay. That's fine. But who, what gives me the right to say, Jeremy, you're wrong? You know, I, I jokingly ask people for fun. What's the best Disney movie ever made? What, Jeremy, what would your answer? The Lion King. Okay, you're wrong. It's clearly Robin Hood, right? Robin Hood's clearly the best Disney movie ever made. Now, obviously, I say that as a joke because The Lion King is the best for you. You love it. That's great. I didn't like The Lion King as much as I liked Robin Hood. I think Robin Hood is the best Disney movie ever made. Who really cares? It doesn't matter that you like a different movie than me. You feel boxing is a martial art. I don't think it is. I'm kidding. I really, I do. But that shouldn't affect how I train or what I train. It, it doesn't affect me that you think it is a martial art or that you think The Lion King is the best Disney movie ever made because it's clearly not. Just kidding. There, there are people who get really wrapped around the axle on the martial part, mm -hmm. but they don't understand grammar. Mm. Yep. Art right? is and the, the, the noun is art. We've talked about this many, many times on the show. And my definition contains the martial aspect. Mm -hmm. But there are people who will say, you know, and it's fighting. It's about fighting. Well, it's um, I'll, I'll all but guarantee that if you go back to the people who founded the things that are or became your martial art, you will probably find that they said otherwise, probably mm -hmm. directly in opposition. But guess what? If martial arts to you is all about fighting, go for it. You're allowed to have, yeah. You can train how you want. I don't have, you know, maybe I can, dis maybe I disagree, but I don't have any right to exert any effort in stopping you from training the way you want. I don't have any right to step in and demand that you tell me why you're training that way. Because you're doing your thing and I'm doing mine. Yep. Yep, I agree. Okay. Uh, the next one. 
every martial artist has the freedom to become better as martial artists and as people. I don't think anybody directly opposes this, mm. uh, but I think it needs to be said because actually, no, I take that back. There are circumstances where uh, crummy instructors will inhibit the progress this of some of their thinking. students for this whatever. Is where I was going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, say more then. Um, you know, we've we've done an episode on uh, instructors should be striving to have their students become better than they are. Mm -hmm. Um better than the instructor is but there are instructors out there who do not want that they want to stay up here and have their students stay lower than them so that they are always the top dog um i don't know that it's a majority but there are there are instructors out there like that yeah. and you as a student have the right to become better as a martial artist if that means you become better than your instructor so be it um, and good instructors will have no problem with that. I, you know, I remember the first time I had a drumming student of mine compete against me in the same division and beat me. I was elated. And I had other people that are like, why are you so happy? Your student just beats you. Like, doesn't that mean you're bad? It was like, no, it means I'm great. It means I'm a great teacher. Like, yeah. this was so amazing for me, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And then kind of the back half of this, this phrase, and as people, yeah. the freedom to become better as people. You know, one of the things that's core to Whistlekick and to our philosophy, and, you know, everybody that's involved with Whistlekick, this is kind of a test. You kind of have to believe this or, you know, we're, we're not going to keep you around. Martial arts brings out the best in us. It makes us better versions of ourselves. And if you're training is helping you become a better person, you have the right to do that. I've seen people, Andrew, you've probably seen people that, uh, here's the, the most concrete example. Someone is in a, a poor relationship, poor marriage, and they train for six, 12 months and they're feeling better about themselves. And that relationship can no longer handle the growth of one person in the partnership. Mm -hmm. And it falls apart because there was a lot of tension and stress in there, but nobody could really figure out who they were outside of that partnership. Yeah. Right. And in many of the cases where I know some of the details, the other person will speak poorly about martial arts. Oh, you were, I liked you better before you started doing that karate stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. We have the right, the freedom to become better. Yeah. Number five, every martial artist has the freedom to take your martial arts training back into your life in the way that you feel is best, including self-defense and protection of others. But notice I'm not saying that those are the only two ways that mm -hmm. martial arts can come back into your life. Yeah, they should interact in your life in the way that you want them to. Your why will direct how your training impacts your life. Mm -hmm. Martial arts is my life. It's my job. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's my social circles. It's why I do many things, including get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's my why. It manifests in all of those ways. But if that's not your why, that's okay. Maybe for you, martial arts training is social and fitness. So maybe you step back into your non the non-martial arts aspects of your life with uh, greater understanding and feeling in your body and maybe some extra friends cool yeah absolutely you know martial arts is not a hundred percent my life it is a large part of it but it's not the only thing that i do you know i have another job but that's okay i'm allowed to have it be a part of my life in the way that i choose And our last one, every martial artist has the freedom to compete in a mutually agreed upon fashion. Now this one on the surface sounds like no big deal, 
except that there are people saying that if your competition is not literally fighting with no rules mm -hmm. to the death, that there's no point. Uh, that point sparring is silly, that forms competition is silly, that, uh, I, I don't know, pick your flavor of martial arts combat sport, that, you know, it, it there's no point to it. Well, guess what? If the two people literally or figuratively beating on each other in the ring are gaining some benefit from it, and they're there by choice, it doesn't impact you. So shut up and go away. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think a classic example is a lot of people do not enjoy uh, the different. There are different ways to do sparring, right? There's lots of different ways of sparring, and who like who cares like, it, that that style over there, like that kind of sparring? I I don't like that. It's not valid. As, as long as those people are enjoying it and they agree upon the rules they're fighting in sparring great good for them doesn't matter in my school i'm gonna do it this way over here that's also totally great. fine go yeah. for it can you imagine imagine that instead of martial arts we were talking about food mm. well i don't i don't like brussels sprouts okay well brussels sprouts can no longer exist yeah no um, one should eat brussels sprouts because they they suck uh broccoli makes you know uh, broccoli isn't as good as cauliflower, so we'll get rid of broccoli. Yeah. And, you know, cauliflower can give some people gastric distress, so we got to get rid of that. And really, fruit can do that, too. And, you know, plenty of people dislike meat. And all we're left with is water, but we won't even be able to agree on what kind of water to drink. Yeah. Do we drink it out of plastic bottles with microplastics, or does it come out of the well where it could have some stuff, or does it come out of public water supply where it's got some fluoride? Or do we go get it out of a naturally occurring spring where it hasn't been treated? Yeah, yeah. But There's we all need, one, go ahead. But we all need food to live. So why does it bother me that you eat whatever and I don't? It doesn't. Exactly. We used to exist in a world where live and let live was a way that we did things. And that is the heart of what all of these freedoms are. And there's a good chance that if someone disagrees with these, that they're probably not watching or listening to this show. Right? Probably. You know, we, we've got some selection bias in here. But we've had some folks who have paid attention to our content. I, I put the first... I think the third one of these went up as a clip from State of the Martial Arts, went up on TikTok today on my personal account. And I think it was the first one where I did catch a bit of flack. But one or two people said, you know, I used to feel really strongly and disagree with what you're saying here. But the more I've thought about it, the more I've, I've listened to what you've said, I see your point and I get it. Now, I don't care that they change their mind. Because again, if, if you feel, you know, what's like, what's something nobody are Shotokan karate. I don't think I've ever heard anyone argue about Shotokan karate and that it is useless, but I'm sure somebody has. I'm picking it because it's the one I can think of that is, is least likely to lead to that of the things that I tra train, have trained and understand. If you are over there thinking that Shotokan karate is the dumbest thing you've ever seen, guess what? It's not going to change anything. The, the, the JKA and offshoot organizations are still quite large and have a significant participation and not one of those people is going to care about your opinion. Yeah. So well, go for it. The thing that I hope that listeners and viewers of this episode take away, because I think you're right, I think a overwhelming vast majority of our listenership will likely agree with most everything we said. And first off, if you don't, that's okay. You're allowed to not agree with us. Would love to hear why. Yep. But what I hope people take away from this is that don't let others, if you if you do agree with us and you agree that what we just said and stand for is something you agree with, don't let others 
fully you into changing your mind. And I have purposely called out friends of mine for saying or doing things that broke one of these freedoms. And I have told them like, Hey, like, why are you bashing on this? Like it, it doesn't matter that like, why are you, and it has led to some good discussions about why are you so heated and worked up over this? Because it doesn't really affect you. And so that's what I hope happens from this is that when you see these things happening outside in your own life, you have some food, some more food for thought that can help others potentially. Yeah. And if you, if you want to talk about this, if you disagree with this, I'd love to hear your intelligently articulated arguments. There was somebody recently who uh, I had to end up blocking from our YouTube channel because they disagreed, but they were unable to do so without being disrespectful hmm. to to both myself and guests that we've had on the show. So I was like, you know, it's one thing if you're going after me, but if you're going after guests, yeah, I'm pretty much done with you. Yep. If you can't articulate your argument with respect, then you don't have a strong argument. Agreed. I want to thank you all for coming by, for watching, for listening, for being part of our audience, for being part of our family. Remember whistlekick.com slash family and whistlekickmarshartsradio.com for all the episodes we've ever done. You know, if you want to go back, if you want to look at some of the other episodes that we've referenced, go ahead. Go search. You'll find that between the transcripts and the titles, you can find a whole bunch of stuff. And maybe you've only been listening a few years. We've been going for over eight years as of the recording of this episode. If you want to support our work, buy some. Patreon. Podcast 15 is a discount code. Tell people. Leave reviews. Don't be afraid to reach out if you think that maybe your martial arts school could do a little bit better. We do offer consulting, and I'm quite proud of the track record that we have with our consulting clients. And if you're interested in having me out for a seminar, let me know. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew's email is andrew at whistlekick.com. And our social media everywhere is at whistlekick. Until next time. Train, train hard, hard, smile, smile have and a great have day. a great day.